Hello everybody, this is the sixth edition of the PGA Podcast. I'm Queenie and today I am joined by the amazing cricketer and world-class one as well, Izzy Wong today. So Izzy, hello and thank you for being here with us today. In fact, I know you're at a training camp today, right? Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me at training today. So uh, Uh getting underway. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, yeah, thank you so much. Honestly, I really appreciate you taking the time out today. Um, We are... This is our sixth PGA podcast as well. So honestly, having a, a celebrity, including a sports sports celebrity in particular, in is is fantastic. So honestly, I really appreciate your time today. And uh, actually, you are a gamer yourself. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Um, I like NBA 2K. That's my favorite game. Uh, oh. I got a little bit addicted to it in lockdown, which was yeah, it was it was a bad time. I was playing ridiculous amount, but yeah. Oh, I see. Got you. Got you. So, would you prefer gaming wise? This is a, a strange one because this is something that's sort of a hot debate for me. Do you prefer multiplayer games or single player? What's your prefer? Do you play against other players or do you prefer playing solo, chilled? What's what's your preference? It depends. It depends. Like I think it depends who you're playing against. Like when I'm playing against my mates, it's like it's good fun, isn't it? Because like you know they're not gonna like rage quit on you. And you can kind of have a good chat while you're going. But like sometimes you, know, you log on and you're chatting to, well, you're not chatting. It's just like some kind of random stranger who's like eight. <laughs> and you oh my God, kind yeah. of have a realization where you're like, I'm playing, I'm playing on my PlayStation against an eight year old who I don't know. And, exactly. Um, and you don't want to, you don't want to beat them. You're like, should I let them win or? But then you don't want to lose to them either. <laughs> yeah. That's embarrassing. Exactly, exactly. No, I completely agree with that. I completely agree with that. I think it's one of these things where, like, for me, I've always played mostly multiplayer, but I I more play, you know, first person shooters and stuff like that, or MMOs like, you know, um, World of Warcraft and stuff. Um, However, and those games don't really have kids too much, but I've played a couple of games of Fall Guys and I I played Fall Guys for quite some time. And some of the people I went up against were quite young and they were beating me. <laughs> they were they were beating me. And I was like, damn, I feel old when these guys are I literally, you know, so I can't let them away with it. You know, if I'm playing against them from now on, I can't let them away with it. Even if they are, if I know they're a lot younger than me, can't. I have to give it my Take all because that's it. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm curious, how did you discover your love for gaming? Um... I don't really know to be honest like I had like a like a Wii when I was growing up so you know you're playing like Mario Kart and stuff uh, against my little brother and then we got like a PlayStation Xbox um, he's actually really into his gaming a lot more than me he's built his own like gaming computer he's really smart my oh brother. okay um, and he's like constantly kind of on that and teaching me things that I don't know um, and yeah it was nice kind of competitive i guess that um because we've got quite a big age gap there's like five years between us but it was something that we could both kind of um get involved with and uh play play with and play against each other so that was really quite nice yeah oh that's really nice actually i think for me as well i can i can relate to that a little bit my brothers both game as well and um, one of them does semi pro uh, call of duty and um obviously i'm not that good but he's he's very good at it, and uh, I think I think it is nice when you have that connection with your siblings. Cause it is very hard, I think, especially with an age gap. My brother and me have the same age gap as your brother and you, five years, and it's it's tough. But if you have something like that, I think gaming is not sort of like age related, where you know only kids play gaming. It's not that case anymore. It hasn't been for a long time. Um, so it's like no matter if you're a teenager or if you're you know in your 20s 30s 40s it's it literally doesn't matter your age you can all connect through it which is quite nice and uh, I, I, I generally think that there of course there's you know games that are more towards kids but most of them are generally you know it doesn't matter your age you can play it and chill out with it definitely I think it's something that like even like we play against my dad and stuff and yeah we could all kind of like you say engage with it and enjoy it There's one thing I wanted to ask, because obviously you are a world-class cricketer and gaming isn't something we would normally associate with uh, cricketers, definitely. It's like, of course, it is a game. It's a sports game in particular. But do you see any similarities between cricket and gaming? It's sports and gaming in general, but cricket in particular, do you see any similarities? Um, Yes, yes and no, I think. Like, I I guess the thing with, with any sport is to get better at it you've got to play more 
Um, mm. and I guess well, we called it train. We call it training, but yeah, because the more you play, the, the better you're going to get. So, and I think that translates into, I guess, all other sports, but then gaming as well. Um, you know, you can always you can always tell when it's like you haven't played in a few weeks, and you, you turn the PlayStation on, and suddenly you get hammered, and you're thinking, oh, I'm a bit rusty here. And the same thing, you know, if you haven't if you haven't batted in a week, and you go out to bat, you're going to be um, you're going to be shanking them all over the place, thinking I should have played a bit more. So, yeah, there's definitely similarities. I agree with that. I agree. I took um, a week off for Christmas and I came back and I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I did not know. So I agree with you. I think it's like uh, there is a bit of a determination where the more time you put in, the more effort, you're going to get better at it. Of course, there's it, there's only that's only, probably one of the very few similarities, I think. But it is effort based. You got to put in the time and the effort and the work for it. Um, if you really care for it. And I definitely think that that is shown, especially in uh, cricket. Like you have to put in the time and effort for it. And I think gaming, if you're going a competitive level, yes, definitely. Um, more the esports side, but it is if you're if you're just a casual casual player, you know, you don't have to work that hard. You can just turn it on and whatever. But you know, if you really want to exactly well, <laughs> I know. <laughs> And everybody's like, oh, do I have to actually be really good? No, you can be whatever, you know, level of skill that you want to be in. It doesn't matter. You know, it's it's for anybody. Gaming is for anybody. Cricket is for, you know, anybody. You can play, of course, but there's higher levels, uh, which I'm, I'm sure you would agree to because you are a professional athlete yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's, like you say, there's kind of that, um, those levels. And I think the really nice thing about cricket, I guess, is that there's a really kind of strong culture of like club cricket recreational cricket but still absolutely loving it just as just as much as you know we do at professional level and I think um you know that's what kind of keeps certainly for cricket that's what keeps the game alive is you know those people who you know the club cricketers the, the kids who just play it because they love it and I think that's probably one of the most important things about I guess any sport is yeah if you if you don't love it then um probably try another sport try something else that you do I agree. I think uh, there is... So, in regards to gaming-wise, would you ever look into e As you're you know, a professional player in a sport, would you ever look at esports? Say, for example, if your cricket team were like, do you know what, we're going to give esports a go? Would that be something you'd ever look at? Yeah, I'd definitely get involved. I think I'm one of the younger ones in the team as well. So I think someone would, you know, a lot of them a lot of them aren't, but I'm very good. At, you know, when we played FIFA and stuff, just... Um, yeah, just in between training sessions in the evenings and stuff. Yeah, some some of the older guys have, have struggled a bit, so I think someone would have to <laughs> have to step up and give it a go. Definitely, if you're younger and your reflexes are a lot better. Oh my god, I yeah, th this is why kids beat like beat you. This is this is exactly why because their reflexes are so good. Like this is why kids beat me anyway. Um, but you know, it's it, it's definitely something there. Like if you're younger, you can pick up things so quickly. So I I can see that. Like this is why a lot of esports teams are very much like people in their early 20s because of that reason there's very few who are like in their 30s and 40s definitely um i have a question for you in regards to sports and in general gaming as well there's a thing where we have a lot more women's teams um and that's that's quite crucial because again you know sports and gaming have a an issue where it's not as inviting always for women in games um but what does it mean for you to be in a in a women's team? Oh, it's um, yeah, it's really. I guess we kind of have that sense of community, and it feels like um, almost kind of like a sisterhood. I guess we spend so much time with each other at training. Um, like this week, we've got a three day camp, so we're kind of spending three days all together training, and then we go away, um, and you kind of with everyone twenty four seven. You get to know them so well, um, so it's really nice that um, you've got those kind of, I guess people to to lean on and, and support you and likewise um you for them uh, i also think it's so important that you've kind of got role models that look like you um and yeah growing up uh, i know especially for some of the younger guys we grew up watching these guys um doing it at the top level and to see kind of women playing in the biggest playing in the best grounds in the world uh winning world cups winning ashes you kind of look up to that and think wow like you know that could be me um and i think that's like the power of that is yeah so strong i think that's i think that's the most important part is like obviously now you are a role model as well in your own right and that is very important i think for me when i was growing up 
Um, there's about 10 years difference between you and me. And um, I didn't see many women in sport. And I also didn't see the same in gaming. I lived in the countryside, so there wasn't really any sports facilities or anything like that. And um, I sort of turned to gaming and I never seen like hardly any women in gaming as well. And uh, it's only becoming more of a, a normal thing to see, you know, uh, women streaming, you know, women gaming. Um, and, you know, I can, you know, jump in a game and I can, you know, speak in, you know, voice, voice comms. And there's a load of other women there. And that's been something I think is very crucial and having women teams out there, especially in sports as well, and especially we've seen, you know, women teams absolutely destroy the men's teams in a lot of the cups that are coming up now. It's what and we it's love showing. to see. Exactly. And that's exactly what should happen uh, where we are now on an equal playing field, where we're getting the opportunities that didn't exist, you know, back 10, 15, 20 years ago. They're now arriving. Uh, and that's that's definitely more important, I think, um, to get out there to a lot of people, a lot of young people as well. Who are like, okay, I didn't think I could do this. No, you can. Uh, it, it's it's possible. You know, it is it is a thing. So, you know, thank you for leading the way with that, especially with cricket, especially with sports in general, because we need to see a lot more young people. And also the fact that there's a crossover with gaming is amazing for me. Um, I have one more. Like this is this is from for me as a gamer. We're sort of like. I wouldn't say introverted, but I was sort of like half and half, I would say. And I think for me, like I stream uh, to a load of people and I'm behind a screen. I can't see them, but, you know, they, they're there, of course, but I can't see them. But you're actually in front of people playing in a stadium. How does that feel? Like, are you nervous or is it like, you know, are you a natural to it? Like, do you go straight out and you're like, yes, this is fantastic. The hype. Yeah, I think so. I think you, to a certain extent, it's not necessarily natural, but you you just get so used to it, I guess. Um, I certainly remember the first couple of times um, playing in front of a, a bigger crowd. You kind of, well, this is this is cool. Um, but yeah, it's, you you get used to it. Um, I think kind of once, you, certainly when you're kind of in in the action, so to say, um, it's it's relatively easy to kind of block that out. It's you know, cricket. The thing is, there's a lot, lot of time where you just literally just stood in a field waiting for the ball to come to you. Um, and that's the kind of time I think, well, I probably struggle with concentrating that, you know, my, my mind might, in between balls, my mind might wander and I'm thinking, wow, that guy's got three scoops on his ice cream. That's incredible. Um, and then suddenly it's like, oh my God, the ball's coming to me. Focus, focus, Wongi. Um, but no, I think even like now, um, you know, we've, we've played a few games recently where the crowds have been, you know, on a whole, whole other level to anything that we're used to. Um, you know, we played at Edgebaston this summer in Birmingham in front of 20,000 people. And for for even, you know, the experienced guys, it was kind of something where it was like, whoa, this is this is, this is is cool. And the atmosphere in there, you know, you, you definitely noticed it, um, even in comparison to normal. But um, yeah, I think once you get into the action and, you know, when you've got the ball in your hand, you're bowling, you're, you know, you're ready to bat. It's, it's very much you and them. Um, but yeah, I think there's definitely scope for kind of actually taking a step back and just kind of appreciating where you are. Makes sense. Yeah. I mean, do you do anything that sort of calms your your nerves completely? Any rituals, anything that's sort of like, OK, I need to just breathe or something that, you know, you can see or something you, you know, do maybe like, you know, stress balls or something like that. Is there something that keeps your nerves calm? I'm quite superstitious. And I always pretend I'm not because it's oh. a bit like it's a bit pathetic because it's like oh like you just know it doesn't it doesn't do anything, but in my head I'm like if I don't do it I'm gonna panic so like I've kind of got to do it. Um, before every ball, I touch my ears uh, oh. when I'm fielding because like you know, have you ever have you ever tried to stand on one leg and be really wobbly? And then when I was in primary yes. school, someone said if you stand on your leg and touch your ears, you balance really well. So oh. I one leg touched my ears and I was like oh I'm balancing so well. It's because like. Basically, your balance comes from your ears. So there's like fluid in your eardrums. So that's why you, when you spin and then you stop spinning, you keep getting dizzy because the fluid's still going around in your ears. And it's something I... about like the connection of touching your ears actually makes you help you balance, or supposedly. And no like, I've got it in my head now so much that before we reach ball when I'm fielding, I touch my ears to like try and make sure I'm balanced. And I know that it doesn't do anything. That's but insane. in my head, um, it like I think it almost like switches me on. It's like, right, okay, touch your ears, right, you're ready to go. I've never heard that. That's insane. I'm yeah. going to do that. I think when we come off the interview, I won't do it now because I'll fall over. <laughs> I, I'm that clumsy, but I'm going to have to do that. 
<laughs> That's amazing. Honestly, because like you put your hands out and you're like wobbling and you put your hands in your ears, absolutely fine. Right, I see, okay, wow. Yeah. That's really interesting. Well, I've, run over, I've run over the boundary rope backwards. Oh. When I, like when I run onto the pitch. What's um, the reason for that? I don't that? know why I do that. I think I, I think oh. I did that once and did really well. And then I was like, in my head, I was like, well, it couldn't have been the hours of training that I did or the, the good night's sleep I got or the, the gym session I did the day before that prepared me really well. It was like you ran over the ramp, found your backwards. And that's the sole reason why you did well. And you must do it every other time you play cricket for the rest of your life. And in my head, that just makes sense. It's like, cool, let's do it. That makes sense. I mean, to, to be fair, for me, I, I came from a superstitious family, so I, I completely get it. I think growing up hearing like, don't put new shoes on the table because it's bad luck. And I was like, yeah. so I can put dirty shoes in the table. <laughs> you know, it doesn't make any sense. But in your head, you're thinking this and you go through your whole life and you're like, well, this happened when I did this. So it, I'm going to do it again and see if I can replicate it. And once you replicate it, once you're like, no, that's it. This is me. You know, it'll, it'll certainly I, I will do really well because I've done all my, you know, rituals or or I suppose rituals, but like superstitions. You're so right. It is like a superstition. You're like, okay, in my head. Do you have any like lucky clothing or anything like that? Because I I've done that once or twice. I've got a favorite sports bra. I don't know if it's lucky, but it's definitely my favorite. <laughs> um, I kind of put it on. And I'm like, oh, I'm ready to go now. Um, what else? I've got. I think I've got definitely got favorites. Um, and it's like if I've got a big game, I will wear my favorite socks. I wear my favorite sports bra. I'll have my favorite spikes on. Um, and I don't, I don't necessarily think it's like a lucky thing. It's like, oh, if I wear these, I'm going to do well. But I think it's more of a comfort thing. Like, like I've, I've been here before. I've worn these shoes before. I've worn these socks before. Like, I, I, feel, I feel at home, I guess. Makes sense, yeah. But I mean, when you go away for games as well, I'm assuming it's like, again, because you're not in your normal you know, place. You're not in your normal sort of like area. Is, is, the, is it more or less like sort of more nerve wracking? Is there something that, you know, it's, you know, it takes more to get used to? Like, cause I, I don't leave, I don't leave my room. <laughs> I, I stay here for, for my job. I don't have to move, but is it something where, you know, it takes a lot more time to get settled um, in a new area or do you just, you know, is it just part of I, the, the job now? I think it's just part of the job. Like, I mean, my, so my home grounds in Birmingham, but I don't actually play there that much because, um, yeah, when we're kind of playing England stuff, we're touring the country. So, say, so we'll have a game kind of in different cities and you're never really in one place more than three or four days. So you just kind of, it's not, I guess you don't really settle. You kind of, you get to know the ground, um, you get to your hotel room. Um, I try and make my hotel room have, like, I always take my blanket with me. Um, uh... Kind of little, little things like that that, I think, I guess, help you deal with traveling um, or even like we went to the West Indies in December and I've taken like my big blanket with me, um, even though it's like 30 degrees and like, I'm obviously going to sweat every single night. But yeah, I've taken my blanket with me just so I, I, I can be all wrapped up just like I always would be at home, I guess. Oh, that's, that's quite sweet, actually. Do you know what? I'm probably <laughs> going to start doing that because when I we travel for gaming events, not as often um of course as you would but we travel for gaming events every so often me and uh blue who is my partner in crime on the blue and queenie channel and uh i ha i definitely have trouble sleeping in in hotels when you go around so maybe i'm gonna start bringing my little little blanket with me and uh, start doing yeah. that because that, that, that would help so much teddy bears a lot of the girls have got teddy bears <laughs> and everyone kind of knows what each other's teddy bears are called um oh. and it's like you kind of you might go into their room and be like oh like Hi mate, hi Dave. Um, and you just kind of know that, that that's called Dave and someone else has got one called whatever. Um, it, yeah, it's quite nice. Oh, it's like a little comfort, isn't it? Bringing it with you. Yep. That makes, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, have you, so the people you've met and the people that you've been on teams with, would you say they are friends you would keep for life? Because for, for gaming wise, again, it is sort of like that. We make connections and we meet them up at events and things like that. Um, obviously, so it, it's it's one of these things where we don't really meet them straight away. You know, we, we randomly meet at events and things like that, and then we become, you know, friends. I mean, for me, I met my partner through gaming, uh, Blue. He, uh, him and me met in Battlefield 4, and uh, we, we met up. But it, it seems like a very strange thing to say to people when, when people ask us, like, how did you meet? Because he's actually from uh, Wolverhampton, so very close yeah, to right. Birmingham. Uh, and the accent's very similar. <laughs> the accent's really, really similar. And um, yeah, he 
he and me met through that and i've met a lot of friends through gaming it's a weird hobby but it is something where like i i always relate to them we can always speak about the latest games and and things like that um uh, is cricket very similar to that like the people you meet on the pitch even if they're like at you know opposite teams or you know um maybe from you know different countries and stuff like that that you've went against do you feel like those are friendships like do you click with them instantly because it's you know a sport that you have in common or is it more like there's a lot more diverse sort of like um uh so like opinions on things where it's not as easy to always get along oh no i think you're absolutely right like i think i don't think firstly i don't think everyone's kind of destined to be a friend just because they play cricket but absolutely <laughs> the kind of connections that you're you make uh, when you're away even you know when you're playing against people yeah um like you say um definitely sort of friendships like i i also i met my girlfriend uh playing cricket um oh. and yeah like that kind of probably wouldn't have happened if we, we didn't play for cricket so that's great but um i guess i guess when you especially when you're on a team with people you're going on tours like you know going on tour is like the most amazing thing ever because like you're you're somewhere really cool in the world it's usually hot because we play cricket um you kind of play in the sport that you love doing but then also it's like you've got downtime and you kind of get get to explore go on a few adventures and stuff and i guess travel travel the world with your mates and that's yeah i guess that's really special but also i think a lot of the what you don't see is like you know sometimes you get really good times playing cricket and it's great but you also get like really hard times i guess when you you might be losing you might be training and it, yeah it's really hard and i think actually going through that as well with them um kind of i guess strengthens those connections because you know it's, it's quite it's quite easy to be to be mates i guess when things are going well but actually it's those people that you spend time with when it's not going so well that um i think those are the ones that the connection and the friendship really um goes goes beyond cricket i guess well, that touches on another subject do you have a moment like a really memorable moment in cricket where you're just like that is something i'm going to keep with me forever anytime you know i get upset i will remember that moment yeah um so when i i got my uh, i made my debut um my test debut i um so before the game in cricket if it's like when you when you play you play a game and it's called a cap so if you play five okay. games they'd say like you've got five caps but when you make your debut you actually get given a cap like an actual cap um and that that's yours and it's got your number on it um oh i see you got you so you're so i got given my cap by uh catherine brunt and she was probably one of my heroes growing up um and yeah that was a really special moment my family were kind of well my family were there um and you kind of like the person like does a little speech um ahead of yeah you making your debut so um that kind of um that moment i guess was really special for me and um of someone that i've got so much respect for um which i think kind of made it sink in a little bit more that it's like wow you're you're gonna play test cricket for your country and you've got you know one of one of your heroes i guess giving you a cap and that was that was really special and those kind of words that she she said um definitely kind of stick with me i think um and yeah it's it's, it's really special i think we've got like we we had a little picture of me my mom my dad my little brother afterwards um of like the four of us my hat um and i think we got it got it put on the it's on the fridge on a little magnet uh so it's quite nice every time i go and get myself a glass of milk or something uh, I kind of open the fridge and there it is it's actually this is quite funny actually so my brother he's uh he was 16 oh he's 15 at the time and he, they kind of they come down to taunton uh for the for the on the morning and my mum came up to me beforehand and she said buster my brother's called buster she said buster had his first shave this morning so when we speak about the photo we always speak about it as the picture of my brother's first shave not of me getting my first cap um <laughs> Yeah, just make him make him a bit embarrassed. <laughs> oh, you, you still have the cap as well, by the way. So you've you've like, do you wear it normally, or is it something you've just like kept as a treasure? Yeah, so um, you keep the same cap. Um, so for the T Twenty and the ODI stuff, you get a different hat every new kit, so it matches the kit. But the Test cap, yeah, you you keep that for your whole career. So uh, we don't play that many Test matches, so it's kind of it's in a cupboard in the living room, I think. Um, and I've got, I've got to try and remember it next time. Next time we play a test match, that I'll, I'll need that cap. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, that that's pretty cool, actually. That's a that's quite a nice little memoir to keep as well. Even if you you know um, for whatever reason like change team or things like that, 
that hat is there no matter what, which is really, really sweet. I like that. That's yeah. quite nice. That's really yeah, nice, it's really actually. nice, actually. And you get, like, a little number on it. It's quite, I guess it's um, kind of once you've got it, it's almost like no one can take it away from you. So um, like, I remember kind of being stood on the pitch on my first game um, and thinking, like, I guess in a way, like, I can kind of relax in a way because no matter how much, how well or how badly this goes, like I've represented my country and I've I've got that hat and like that's mine now and like, no one can just rip that off me and say that never happened because that's mine and that's going to be in my living room. Do you know what I mean? Whatever happens. So what's your what's your number on your hat then? So for test matches, mine is one six six. I think ah. yeah, one six six. Got you, got you. So that yeah. would you consider that as a lucky number then for you now? I guess so. Um, I guess so. It's quite nice. 66 is Trent Alexander-Arnold. He's one of my favourite Liverpool players at the moment. And that's his number. So I like the number 66. Route 66. Um, oh, yeah, you're right. Things of six. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, to be, to be honest, I don't know my number on here on Twitch, but it, it's... It's probably like a ridiculous number considering how, how big it's, there's millions of people on Twitch. Um, I'd love to know though. I actually, do you know what? I, yeah. I might, I might do that. I might do exactly what you're doing. Get it, get some hat that says my number on it, and then I'll be like, right, yeah. this is mine. <laughs> Whenever I join, I don't know what it'll be like a million something, but it's it's quite a quite something that'd be really really nice. Um, so is so what was the what's the first game you sort of played growing up? Do you remember something that you know was sort of stood out to you that? you enjoyed and it probably not around now because there's a lot of games that i played growing up that aren't around now um they just don't exist but do you remember anything that you were like oh i you know what i i enjoyed that yeah there's one lego star wars the complete saga <sighs> and i completed it i completed it i went through every single level completed it and then i went back and did them all on free play got all like you know those little kind of satellite part things that you had to yes. collect i've got every single one of them and then we scratched the CD and it didn't oh, work. Oh no. So we got it again and I completed yeah. it again and went yeah. through it again. And then I plugged it in the other day to try and play it again, just cause I was like, oh, I've got, got a spare couple of hours on my hand, like play something that I don't have to think too much about. I'll play a bit of Lego Star Wars and it, it, it didn't work. Yeah. Yeah. It's always disappointing. I, I, I remember the PlayStation one, the amount of times that I bought the Digimon World 3 and the amount of times that that disc just decided to not work. And I was looking at it, I was like, there's hardly any scratches on this. And then <laughs> you also used to go and um, there, there were so many theories online of how to fix a disc. So I remember rubbing oil in these discs just to fix it. And it just was like, this ain't working. <laughs> this is going to break the PlayStation more than anything else. But, I was going to say, I don't think yeah. that PlayStation's going to thank you. No, it did not. I, I went through quite we a few a, of them as well. We had Simpsons Road Rage on PS2 as well. Yes, that was a great game. What a game. What a game. Oh, it was so good. That was amazing. Oh, and to be honest, I don't think I ever completed it. I just, you know, literally did the road rage. I don't think I did any of the tasks. Yeah. You were using No, I didn't do any of the tasks. I was, you could go on like, was it Sunday Drive? And it was like, yeah. you didn't even get any money for dropping people off, but it was just kind of fun, just like zooming around Springfield. Yeah, exactly the same. Like, I didn't do anything. I was like, do you know what? I, I don't care for the missions. I'm just going to do whatever I want at the time. <laughs> And uh, I think the best part was like my memory cards, they never worked for the, the PlayStations. So I just randomly every so often, I just have to start a new game because the, the memory card oh, wouldn't work. It's the worst, but I was like, it's fine. It's fine. It doesn't matter. This game is like not really an achievement hunter for me. And actually, um, for me, gaming wise, I think s skills, I've learned a lot of, so I suppose more social skills than anything else. But is there anything that you've learned from gaming or even cricket that you've put into like get the gaming side of cricket side so say for example i'm not really sure there's there i, I can't even i don't think i can relate to this because i don't do sports too much uh, as you can tell full gamer but um <laughs> is there something that you've learned from gaming that you've brought into cricket um it's a good question um I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if it's necessarily a direct answer but um quite often i i take my playstation away um and so I, they don't it doesn't have to learn from one and the other but kind of i guess using using them together as like um i guess more again like a comfort thing um mm. when you go away and you know you're kind of in a hotel room and um i guess the other side of the world from kind of your friends and stuff to actually be able to 
plug in your PlayStation to the telly, try and connect it to some really bad Wi-Fi and uh, chat to your mates and stuff is, um, yeah, it's quite nice. So I'm not less sure necessarily it's the same, but um, slight, I guess, similarities that they can definitely help each other out in that stage and definitely to be able to have that and then take, I guess, that, that kind of switch off. Um, yeah. So you're not constantly cricket, cricket, cricket and actually have that time where you switch off or you're doing something else to then take that back into training, into games, you're a lot more fresh. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, there, so are your family big into sports in particular? Is that how you sort of got into it? What, what sort of led you down the cricket path? Yeah, so my dad loves Liverpool, right? He's the biggest Liverpool <laughs> fan of football you'll ever meet. Um, he's forever an optimist. Like we went to Brighton two days ago and we were getting beat 3-0. We were playing terribly. And he was still like, if we get a couple here, you never know what might happen. And it's literally like, Dad, it's like, there's like five minutes left that we're 3-0 down. We've played terribly. I'm not sure it's happening, but... He's um, optimistic. So he's optimistic. Forever the optimist, <laughs> my dad. Um, so, yeah, I've been going to watch Liverpool since I was about that high. Um, and I played football when I was at school. I wasn't very good, though. I've got what I call a Toblerone foot of like the ball kind of hits my foot and it might just bounce off at any angle. Um, So football wasn't really for me. I I loved it, but I wasn't very good. Um, And then I, yeah, just by chance played cricket in, yeah, in the playground after school. And I was like, oh, I'm a bit better at this time at football. This is good. Um, And yeah, I kept kept loving it and people kind of kept saying, oh, you should, you should, you know, join a club. So I joined a club and they were like, oh, we want you to play for the county. So I played for the county and then, yeah, it just kind of, I guess escalated from there but yeah it started I guess completely by chance and I just kept going because I loved it so yeah it was great yeah um, I mean like for for cricket wise I think a lot of young people you know play it in schools uh, which is great to see um, but ne- like I haven't uh, I haven't seen many people get into like as as like professional side was it something because you find out you're sort of like good at it because I know you have like a, a main hand that you bowl with I believe it's right yeah and is that so when you find that out and you realize you're you're good at it you were like right this is this is it this is the, the way I want to go uh, I want to go professionally down this sport instead of football this is it cricket was it like were you determined once you find out that you you know understood it you're pretty good at it this is you know what you want to do was it just like something snapped in your head or did you think about it slowly discuss with your family like how did that process go yeah so i also played a lot of tennis as a kid um and they they're they're very similar but they're also very different obviously the kind of hand-eye coordination for batting and tennis are similar but um Mm. in a very simple way in cricket you want to get your feet really close to the ball when you're batting and in tennis you want to give yourself kind of lots of room so I got to the age of like 11, 12 maybe, and I had my tennis, I had my cricket coach who's saying, you like, you need to get your feet close to the ball. Um, I had my tennis coach who's saying, like, ah, oh, like you need to give yourself a bit more room. And I was like, ah, kind of, and they were kind of going against each other. And I was always very competitive. And I do think it's able to kind of, I do think you can do both at the same time. But for me, I was like, ah, oh, like I really, really want to be good at cricket. Um, so I actually stopped playing tennis just because I was like, I need to get this foot close to the ball. Um, and if this is going to help, it's going to help. Um, and I guess I kind of made the right choice. Um, who knows? Um, but yeah, I think there was certainly a kind of decision that I'm going to stop playing tennis because, sorry, I've just whacked the microphone. Um, I'm going <laughs> to stop playing tennis because, yeah, because I want to I wanna be see how far I can go in my cricket. Um, in terms of playing professionally, I kind of, when I was growing up, it was kind of, it was in this kind of period where to be professional cricketers as a female, you had to, you had to be playing for England. So, okay. and I think, but I don't, I don't, I don't know if I necessarily thought about that when I was kind of 12, I was, I don't mm-hmm. know. I was, I don't think I was thinking I need to, I need to get a job that pays. I was, I was still kind of like, Oh, I want to play cricket for England. And it was like, you know, how many kids do you go into the playground? And it's like, I want to be Lionel Messi. And it's like, well, for a start, you're not Argentinian. <laughs> and <laughs> how good are you at football but like I was still kind of in that stage where I hadn't I hadn't really thought it through um mm. and I think by the time I was old enough to think it through it was like the game was there were more professional contracts coming in at kind of regional levels and stuff and it was like oh like 
yeah, you can actually do this. Like, you're going to have to work hard, but you can actually do this. Um, and there were lots of conversations when I was at school about um, how they could kind of support me um, in, in what I wanted to do the same they would as someone who wanted to study medicine or someone who wanted to, uh, you know, to to go to Oxbridge, whatever. And it was that, okay, well, that's what you want to do. So how are we going to support you? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I guess there was kind of a, a proactive element to it. That makes sense. I mean, it's it's something that, you know, it's like a dream for a lot of young people, especially who want to get into sports. So it's it's nice to see the route that you've went down, how the path evolved and how the idea evolved of you going into that route. Um, there 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 isn't again, I, I, I don't know too many myself, but it is a hard route to go down. You definitely have to work on it a lot. I think that, you know, um, like you've obviously done fantastic and you've worked every single day to get to where you are and that is extremely uh, admirable by the way i just want to say that i <laughs> the fact that you've gone to that stage is absolutely fantastic um but it does touch up on another thing is that gaming wise there's been a lot more sports professionals jumping into the gaming world if a game asked you would you ever want to be in a game for example like a cricket game animating you in would you ever be up for that? I'm curious, just just because there's there's been a lot of football stars, but would you ever do it as a cricket professional? Would you ever be ever up for being animated in? Absolutely. How cool would that be? That'd be uh, amazing. Yeah, I think that'd be really cool. Um, I'm I'm quite I'm quite yeah. I think that'd be I'd be down for that hundred <laughs> percent. There you there you go. Any any game developers watching? Yeah, hit me Make up. Make sure you contact. <laughs> Make sure you contact Izzy. And if you do actually mark Izzy in chat, by the way. All the social medias will be coming up as well, so make sure you do that uh, in chat. If you're, especially if you're a game developer, there's, there's, there's an opportunity right there. Definitely something. I think I, honestly, I would love to as well. But it's, it's one of these things where you know we've seen more sports professionals in it, and it's great to see. It's the same with gaming professionals. You're starting to see them being animated in games. I think it's like more of the future, especially sports wise, where you can put your personality a little bit more in because they don't seem to do that. Especially in, as you mentioned, you play FIFA. Uh, as well, they they are are not putting the personality of the sports players in. So if they can do that, uh, cricket has a hundred percent an opportunity to do that because of the style of game it is. You could put people's personality in that so easily, uh, or even like voiceovers and things like that. It'd be amazing to see that uh, as a crossover. 100%. I think, like you say, it's that kind of crossover of of, of fan bases and communities as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm sure it's the same for, for you with gaming, but for us as cricket, there's definitely a kind of community that um that love watching cricket um and play cricket and yes watch cricket um and i think to have that crossover of communities would be so powerful oh my god um, yes there's, there's so many would be amazing to see yeah there, there's so many i the amount of gamers that i know that you know watch sports is insane i didn't realize how much there was but there is a crazy amount of gamers that do that. In fact, mostly casual people who casually game PlayStation, Xbox, um, even PC, they watch a load of sports. They will come off the PC and they'll be like, right, I've got a, I've got a match to watch. This is it. No, no gaming. Don't care what it is. That's it. They've got a match to watch. So the crossover is insane. And I don't think a lot of people sort of picked up on that, but you know, it might not be, you might be like, oh, well, it's not exactly the same gaming and sports, but the crossover is insane. You will find somebody who goes to a, uh, you know, sports match, football, cricket, whatever. They will own a console. They will own something. They will, they will 100% play that in their downtime when there's, you know, no matches on, nothing to watch or check out. They will be on a console. It's just how it goes. You know, that's just the way it is. They want to play against another you know, friends wherever they are in the world. And they just want to chill out and wait for the next match whenever that is. So there's a massive crossover. Um, and again, I'm, I'm very surprised that uh it isn't it hasn't been picked up on uh yet where they want to see the personalities i mean personally for me i, I love seeing the fact that I've, i'm you know interviewing you here is fantastic you know because we get to see more of not just obviously you playing um on uh, a field but also you know what your personality is like and what you do in your downtime uh, and that is something i think a lot of young people like to see as well so hopefully that it comes up is there a game that you um want to play in the future or something you've got your eye on might be coming so out i've got my eye on um i'm not too sure to be fair i'm not too sure um 
I, I get so so wrapped up in like cricket that I don't I don't have too much bandwidth to like plan forward for anything else. It's quite strange, but like um, like we say for example, we've got the Ashes this summer, and my whole kind of the Ashes is like for anyone who doesn't know cricket, the Ashes is kind of like the pinnacle of cricket. It's like it's the it's Australia versus England. It's really old rivalry. It's yeah. it's produced some of the kind of iconic performances over the years. Uh, and we've got that coming up this summer. So in my head, it's just like ashes, ashes, ashes like that. And there's there's no kind of there's no kind of I guess thought of of, of almost anything else. Uh, it's quite sad actually. I need to get a life. I need to get out of all, realistically. But yeah, uh, I'm super excited for that. I think and and I haven't I haven't thought too much past it. <laughs> That's gonna be your whole summer then. Like literally locked in. You got you will have to completely focus on that. That makes total sense. That's honestly there's there's times where there's games coming out that I have to focus just purely on those launches alone. <laughs> I, I completely understand that makes total sense. Like I think there's most games come out at Christmas time these days anyway. They're all they're yeah, all trying to keep them at Christmas. So you'll have to wait until Christmas. I don't think anything crazy is coming out this year, but it's to wait until Christmas. What would you recommend? If you have to give me one game to recommend that I get I get into, what would you say? Do you know what? A game because you don't have that much time due to cricket, you would probably be better off getting a Switch and then playing Switch. Pokemon or yeah. actually do you know what? Do you know what? Story of Seasons. I know that's yeah. it's not a competitive game, but it's such a chill game that you can play yeah. on. Like that's just Relax. that cute little relaxing game you can just chill out to. So that is something you should hundred percent check out. Um, right. Just because you can just be like, nothing else matters. I just play this, <laughs> put it on, and it's also like travel size because I know you travel all around yeah. the world. So something really easy to just carry with you and also it's like really easy to get on airlines like you just have to plop it yeah. out of your bag and that's it um and i find that that we take our switch every so often but it's so difficult to take on laptops playstations xboxes yeah. that is insane i the amount of times they've been like yeah this, we're just gonna have to double check this and swab this down and i'm like i don't have anything in it trust me it's fine so <laughs> there's nothing in that um so when is the next game we're gonna see you on can you tell us when your next game is when you're gonna be next on uh tv it'd be fantastic to to hear when if you, if you know by the way you might actually not know but um so we've got a we've got a world cup coming up um so that's that's the big one so i'm going we're off to south africa next week so i'm in as, as a reserve so um but yeah that's that's i guess that's in the imminent future and then yeah the english mm -hmm. summer starts april late april um so there'll be um kind of regional games um there'll be there's live streams for all of those um that's the charlotte edwards cup and the rachel hayho flint trophy um and then yeah the ashes um in i think june uh i might be wrong but yeah the ashes is 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 the big one um we're going to we're going all around the country for that. Um, it's really exciting for us actually this year. So um, we're, we've been in the the some of the smaller grounds in the past, whereas this year for the Ashes, um, you know, we're we're in the biggest cricket grounds in the country, um, and that's that's massive. Um, so we've got a, a Test match in Nottingham. Um, we've got T20s in London, Birmingham, and then we've got One Day Internationals in Southampton. Oh my god, this is a very Bristol busy schedule. <laughs> and I want to say Leeds. I might be wrong about Leeds. Unconfirmed Leeds. Oh Maybe Manchester, one of the two. Um, is, this, yeah. is this going to be like so, every single week? That's insane. Yeah, so there, there'll be games. The, they'll actually go on for probably three or four weeks. Uh, a couple of games a week. Uh, the test match goes on for a whole week. Oh. Um, so you kind of like, it's quite weird because it's like you play a whole day's cricket and then you go to bed. And then you wake up the next day and you're still playing the same day's cricket. Wait, um, what, what time do you yeah. have to get up at for that? Like roughly? Uh, wouldn't be too, you'd start so play start at like eleven. Um, so it'd be like oh, 11 that's early. Five, something like that. <laughs> that's yeah, still early I mean, for I'm me. Not a morning person. I'm not a morning person either. Don't worry. <laughs> Well, honestly, thank you so much for joining us today because I know you're on a, a strict time schedule. I appreciate you joining us today. Uh, and honestly, it's been fantastic. I will have all the links uh, in chat, guys. So extra mark Izzy Wong. Um, but honestly, thank you so much for joining us today and um, also sharing your gaming experience and as well as sharing so much about cricket in general. And trust me, I will be watching you. I know exactly what the ashes are. Uh, I've heard about it so much. My mom's partner is um, from uh, Leicester and he 
he watched so much of the ashes over the years so i know exactly what you're talking about and i will be watching 100 percent. so thank you so much for joining today no, and thank you very much i wish you luck by the way in the next couple of games test matches or thank you. the full ones yeah and so. yourself thank you so much goodbye